Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Welcome to our next class. In this class, we will look at Chapter 6, which covers the Document Object Model. This only briefly touches some of the capabilities of the Document Object Model and you can refer to the supplemental handout for more information and links. We have looked at the DOM as the hierarchical tree representation of the document. It is the collection of all of the nodes that represent the web page. JavaScript can modify the DOM. So this is, was a big enhancement to the JavaScript language. Prior to being able to use the DOM, there were only form elements, images, and li anchor links that could be manipulated with JavaScript. Now JavaScript can access and manipulate anything on the page. We have looked at this conduct concept of descendants, parents, children, and siblings. So this is one of the ways that we can relate to the elements based on their hierarchical representation one to another. So for example, here we have a tree structure of the HTML document and every element is a node. The text inside the elements are nodes. We also have attribute nodes and comment nodes. Alright, so let's take a look at the common node types that you would typically use with the document object model. The document itself, and that only has element nodes as child nodes. So in other words, the body essentially will only have element nodes as children nodes. Every element is a node. These elements can contain additional element nodes, text nodes, comment nodes, and they can have child nodes. Attribute nodes. Any HTML attribute of an HTML element is a node, and they, they can have text nodes, which would be a child node. The text in and of itself, the text in between the tags, the text for an attribute, and the text for a comment. These are nodes. Notice that the text node does not have child nodes. So these are the typical nodes that we use to access and to change or manipulate. So some common node properties. The parent node. The parent node would be the parent of that node. The node value would be the text attribute or common node. It would be the, the text for those. A child node would be an array of node objects. The first child would be the first child object for that node. The last child. The next element sibling. We will see these concepts again in jQuery. We also have similar concepts in CSS. All right, let's take a look at some of the methods of this what is called document interface. We have already looked at get element by ID, a very useful way of accessing an element based on its ID attribute value. But let's face it, we can't go putting IDs in every element on the page. We also have get elements by tag name. And depending on what tag name that is, it would return an array of elements that would match that element or tag. If you look at the HTML sample here, and this is a, the code for a radio button, if we were to use get elements by tag name and the element we're looking for is the input element, it would return an array of all of the input elements on the page. 
Another useful method, get elements by name. Name refers to the name attribute. If you look at the HTML example here, for this radio button, name equals pets. The name attribute exists only in form elements, and the purpose of that is to, to identify that element to send information to the web server. So if we wanted to access all of the elements with a, a certain name, for an example, a group of radio buttons would all have the same name. This is how we could access the radio buttons, loop through them, and determine whether or not one was checked or not in a validation type scenario. Another method, get elements by class name, and that would be the name of the class. If you take a look at the HTML example here, class equals red, it would return an array of all the elements that have a class of red because red would be the name of the class. Class is an attribute. So this is another way of accessing elements with a common characteristic. Very similar to get element by ID, referring to the ID attribute, get elements by class name refers to the class attribute. And because class can be used multiple times on the same page, it is get elements, and therefore it returns an array. Some other methods of what is termed the element interface. So now we're looking at specific elements as opposed to collections of elements on the page. The has attribute method. If you were going to be manipulating an attribute, it might be a good idea to first make sure that that attribute is there before you start trying to do something to it and cause a problem. So we have this has attribute method, which will return true if the element has that attribute. So let's take a look at our HTML example, class equals red. So if we were to test if that has that attribute name, which is class, then that would return true, and then we could proceed with some type of additional um, statements. Another method is get attribute. This allows us to return the, at the value of that attribute. So if we take a look at our HTML code, class equals red, this would return red. So if we wanted to find all of the elements with, a, with um, a class equals red, we could use the get attribute. We can also set attributes. And this is very powerful. And this is what we mean by modifying the document model. We can actually change the HTML elements and structures using JavaScript. So this is the set attribute method. And it takes two parameters. The first is the attribute name and the second is the value. And it will set that attribute to that value or it will set a new attribute to a new value. So here we have a look, here we have our typical example class equals red in the span. Now if I were to set a new attribute set the style attribute to the font size of 1.5, which we see at the bottom of the page here. If we were to load that page, on the right you would see that dogs would be larger. Now, what you're looking at here are screenshots of Firebug. There are times when you will be manipulating the document object model, and you just can't assume that your there's a, no way to figure out whether your code worked or not other than to see if the actual HTML code has changed. Now you cannot do that looking at the view source. The view source shows you 
the hard-coded static code. Firebug gives you the ability to look at the generated HTML. So on the right here, we are actually looking at the Firebug here, and notice we have the HTML tab. And it, you can actually see that yes, we did indeed set a new attribute and value. Not only can we see it in the web page on the right, the left, but we can actually see it because sometimes it might not be that apparent in the visual mode. We also can remove an attribute. So here again, um, we can remove that class and value that we just set and remove attribute, essentially removes the attribute, period. And here we see the generated code in the Firebug add-on and we can also see the visual display. All right, I'm going to talk about the create element method, which is not in the book, because you may encounter this at some point. The, and here again, as we said, the document object model gives us the ability to actually change the HTML, thereby changing the object hierarchy. All right, so let's take a look at how we do this. If you take a look at our first line of code, here we're, we have var new div. We're creating a variable to hold a value. The value is document.createElement, and in parentheses we have a B. This is the bold tag. So we can create a bold tag, and now we're storing it in this div. All right, so essentially that's holding an opening and closing B in the browser's memory. All right, now let's, get, let's put some content inside that opening and closing B tag. The next line of code, var new content equals document.createTextNode. So in order to put content inside it, you have to go, you have to create the text node. And in the parentheses, this is the text node that we have created. Here again, we're storing that in a variable because variables are easier to work with. Now, we have these two nodes in memory. Now we need to do something to them. All right, first we have to append the text node to the element. Just because we created a, a, an element and then created text, JavaScript doesn't know what we want to do with it. It doesn't know that we want to append one to the other. So we have to tell JavaScript. So if we look at the third line of code, new div, what is new div? It's that bold tag in the first line of code that we created, dot append child. All right, what child are we appending? The new content, which is being held in that variable. All right, so now we have a B, and inside the B, it says hello from a new B. All right, now we have to put that somewhere on the page. Next line of code. All right, we're gonna access an element. We have to figure out where we're gonna put this on the page, so let's create a reference to something on the page. So in our fourth line of code here, we have the para. All right, excuse me, I probably should have said var the para because that is a variable. All right, sorry, my mistake. Um, equals document dot get element by ID para. So there is something on the web page that has ID equals para, and let's assume it is a paragraph. All right, so now we are holding an object reference in this variable, the para. Now we have this object reference, the para dot append child again. All right, now we're appending the child, which is new div, and new div is the bold with the text inside it. And that will be appended as a child inside that P element. This is a common thing that you will see in people's code uh, with respect to using the document object model. All right, so let's take a look. And remember, I have sample examples of everything I have talked about in the sample code. All right, so at the very top of the screen, PID equals para. All right, there is our HTML element, all right, in our web page. 
All right, in the second section here, in the, in the block, all right, we have this button, click to add new element. So when I click that button, I am running the code that we just looked at, and it's adding that B as a child to that P. So if you look at the C, the, the P, the um, HTML at the top, where it says add an element to the page inside this paragraph, and now you look at my screenshot, after I clicked the button, that text exists. We also see this new content, which is the, the element and the node that we created and appended. Now, let's take a look at the, the generated code using the Firebug add-on. There you can actually see there is that B, there is that text node, it is appended as a child to ID equals para. So you want to get in the habit of using this Firebug add-on to look at, and this is called the rendered code, all right? It's not the view of the generated code, it's not the view source, it's what's actually really happening with your JavaScript.